channel. I'm so excited today because I've got a really cool dumpling recipes that I love and I hope you will enjoy it too. Now, if you haven't already seen it, there is a video on how to make the skins really chewy. So go check out my other video if you haven't done the skins already. So first of all, what are you gonna put in the filling? It really depends on your family or whoever you're feeding. You can have pork, chicken, you can have pretty much anything. You're looking at about 300, 400 grams for about 30 dumplings. So today I'm gonna use 200 grams of pork and 200 grams of prawns. Now with the prawns, uh, mince them up, but you really have a big choice on how you wanna chop them. You can have big chunks, so when you eat it, you can see nice, the nice pink flesh, or you can mince it until it's nice and mushy and blend it in, into the pork. It really depends on you. So remember, it's up to you how you want to make the filling. Now, if you're using pork, you wanna use two things. One, bicarb soda, because it breaks down the fibers and it makes the pork really, really soft. And two, you wanna use cornstarch. It, once it's cooked, it gives it this nice, smooth, velvety feel. So you give it a good mix, then add in your prawns. Uh, you can add in chives or cabbage, up to you. As long as you chop it up into probably half a centimeter cubes, then you can chuck in pretty much any veggie that you feel like it will cook in five minutes. So any soft veggies. with the ginger, if you haven't seen it before, is to peel it with a spoon. It's a lot faster, a lot neater. There you go. Really nicely peeled and super fast with a spoon. Okay, we're gonna directly break this into the bowl. Okay, a little bit of shashing wine. With the soya sauce, this is a really easy trick that my mum taught me. You look at the bowl of whatever you're gonna put soya sauce in and you imagine it that it's rice. How much soya sauce is a fair amount of soya sauce? You're not gonna pour in more soya sauce than rice. And you're not gonna pour in just a dab that you can't taste. So if you imagine that the bowl that you're about to fill is rice, then you will have this gut feeling of how much sauce to put in. You don't wanna go crazy, you just wanna put enough amount so there's flavor there. Give it all a good mix. Um, and you can tell when it's ready, when you're mixing and it starts to sound like really sticky and it's coming all together. Because these are homemade skins, you don't need water, but if you use store-bought skins, please use a little bit of water to make it stick. All you have to do is dip your finger in water and rub it around the edges. Now, to make the pleats, it's a little bit tricky, but give it a go, trust me, after a couple, you'll be an expert and you can really impress your friends with it. So with your left hand, hold it and give it a, like, a little bit of a cup shape. Put the filling in, about a teaspoon or just around the center, flatten it a little bit, and then use your right hand, your index finger and your thumb to give it a pinch. Now, if it's homemade, it will just stick. And then use your thumb to guide the extra skin and form a pleat and then pinch it again. And you just repeat this until you get right to the end. Now, if you notice, it gives it this kind of like pyramid kind of shape. These will sit in the pan really nice when you cook them. Now, all you have to do is repeat until you finish off all the dough and all the filling. Now, turn the pan on quite hot, put a little bit of oil. You wanna use a non-stick pan and one that has a lid that closes nice and tight. It's really up to you. If you like really soft dumplings, you can just chuck them in the boiling water and once they start floating for a minute or two, you can drain them and they're ready to eat. But if you really want to impress your guests, try this out. Put a teaspoon of plain flour into a jug or a mug of water and then give it a good whisk. You can use a fork or you can use a whisk, but make sure you break up any lumps of flour. Just wait maybe two, three minutes as soon as the bottoms of your little dumplings turn a really nice caramel color, you can pour in your concoction of plain flour and water. Now it will spit at you, so be very, very careful. You wanna pour it all in one go and pop the lid on. Okay, it's gonna spit. Okay. 
So it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, you can see that most of the water has evaporated and you can see this sticky, uh, glutinous or flourish concoction at the bottom of the pan. Lift off the lid and just let it simmer and evaporate until it turns a really nice caramelly golden colour. Now be patient. Don't try and remove your dumplings just yet. Make sure all the water is out. You will know this because they will just lift off your pan by themselves. It's like magic. So now that all the water is evaporated, we can now flip it. You can put a plate on top of it. Now make sure that you didn't use too much oil. If you have, it might drip on you and you can just slide it out. Look what happened to that tiny little teaspoon of flour that you added to the water. It formed this beautiful lattice. I'm so excited. Every time I see it, it's just, you can feel the crunch in your mouth when you go to eat it. So it's really cool. Um, I hope you give it a go because it makes your dumpling a lot more impressive than regular dumplings and your friends, I'm pretty sure, will be impressed too. I'm going to go and enjoy this dumpling. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, like and turn on notifications. Until next time, bye!